All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, Play Fast Football. Today we're going to look at using some two-back sets with X over, which is two-back trips, uh, pain in the neck to defend, and I'm going to show you why I like it uh, from an offensive perspective, all the things you can still do out of it. Make sure you check out some of our partners' game strategy, sideline replay system we use at the school I'm currently at and the last school I was at, uh, we used it as well. So uh, we haven't had any issues with uh, software, hardware, any issues we have had. They've uh, on call immediately, you can call them up right away and they'll try and solve any issues that you have. Great customer service, always friendly, always supportive, so make sure you check out GameStrat. Dome Hats, a headwear company that we use at the school I'm currently at. The last school I was at, I used them as well. I've been using them for about the last probably eight to ten years or so, if not longer. Uh, local company here in Northeast Florida, but they do a ton of work nationally. Got a great online hat builder. Completely customize your own hat, build your own hat. Every hat has a story. Make sure you let Dome tell the story of your hat. Baker Sporting Goods, which we use for uh, coaching shirts like this, our players gear, our uniforms come from uh, Baker Sporting Goods, so I like the fact that I always see the same reps, usually year in and year out, all right, there's very little turnover, there's uh, consistency with their reps, and they have quality customer service, so make sure you check out Baker Sporting Goods. Just Play, which is the playbook software we use. We use it for our installations. We use it during presentations. Coach uses it in team meetings. If I was ever going to speak at any clinics, I would use their presentation mode to speak at clinics. It's the best play drawing tool on the market, so check out Just Play. Difference USA, ultimate striking machine. Get thousands of reps without needing a partner. Now, needing a partner, we have a couple in our weight room right now. You can put them in your weight room. You can put them on the field. Uh, you can work on striking, elbows in, thumbs up, and you get a bunch of reps. Don't need a partner. It's just you and the Difference USA pad. Coach Tools, which is a player grading system, a new age way to grade players uh, on a database software where you can customize your own columns and take some of the frustration out of grading players and makes it a little bit more professional. So make sure you check out Coach Tools. All right, so when you look at... Uh, a two-back X over set, okay? One of the first things that you got to look at from an offensive perspective is I feel like I have all the same runs that I would have in my two-back world, okay? So I feel like I have all my same gap schemes. I have all my same zone schemes. I have all my same insert theories or whatever I, I want to run. So if I was a power counter, all right, some type of inside zone or zone insert team, all right, buck sweep team, whatever it may be, I feel like I've got all the same two back runs. And by adding a body to the front side, what I've done is I've made them, or I've tried to make the defense declare, are you going to defend that as a trip set? Now, the problem for a defense, coming from a defensive perspective, is one of those guys are going to be ineligible. I know one of them is going to be ineligible. All right, it's usually the number two receiver, but it could very easily be the number three receiver. So if I'm trying to play, all right, first of all, if I'm trying to play some type of trips concept to it, now what am I going to do on the backside? Who do I have to get involved in the fits? If I play a trips coverage to a two-back set, I'm probably going to end up a gap short, all right? It's like trying to defend a lot of hardball quarterback runs from 10 personnel three by one when you're making trips adjustments, but then you are also having to defend two back runs, all right? If you don't gap some things out or stunt some people to gap some things out and get the ball to do something different, you're gonna get yourself in a little bit of trouble because you end up being gap short because you are defending trips, but at the same time, they have two back run theories. So one of these guys is gonna be ineligible, all right? And that's a little bit of the downside of it from an offensive perspective. That doesn't mean you can't still throw the ball out there. You just got to understand that on downfield passes, that ineligible receiver can't get downfield. Now, if you throw the ball behind the line, if you wanted to throw back outs or bubbles, that guy can be blocking somebody. If you wanted to throw zone slip, all right, like if you wanted to get the H out, so if you were running inside zone, all right, and you wanted to work the double on the three up to the wheel, work the double on the nose out to the safety or the corner, whoever it may be, and then you work the five technique, and you run inside zone, all right, and you read the defensive end, now you can go body on body, body on body, body on body, slip, all right, the, the tight end, H-back, whoever it may be, fullback, whatever you call him, slip him into the flat, and now you can run zone three, you know, your zone read sneak theories or your flat RPO theories, all right, off of a defender where if he plays the zone, you can pull and throw. If he sits, you can run inside zone. Okay, so you've got theories like that. It doesn't mean you can't throw the ball, all right, behind or to the side of the trips. You just got to make sure that that ineligible guy can only go downfield if you throw the ball behind the line of scrimmage, right? So obviously, you can still throw the ball out of that set. 
What I like the, the, the most about it is I have all my two back runs. So again, depending on how the defense depending on how the defense wants to line up to this, some teams will play corners over and they'll match it up over there and leave an eight man box. Okay. Some teams will adjust to it like a, a three by one set, but then they will try and get extra guys into the fit. So maybe if we're playing sky theories on the backside, all right, maybe we gotta be a little bit more aggressive with that corner. That's gotta become either a robber or a poach. Like sometimes we'll take the backside corner of safety. That's the high part since there's no eligible receiver backside. We'll take that guy and we'll poach him kind of off the fullback there so that he can get involved in a run fit a little bit quicker. All right, but if you wanted to run power, you'd have power the same way. So if you doubled the three and worked it, worked it back. All right, kicked the five technique, pulling wrap front side back or there, hinge the back side. Now you've got front side power. Okay, so you've got front side power and you're blocking it the same way, nothing's changed. If you wanted to run power read, you could do the same thing and you could put the back over here, cross face. Now you can go power read and you can arc release to the support player. All right, you'd still be reading the five technique and now you've got three bodies on three bodies out here and you've still got the power play block the way you want it. All right, so if they're a, a hard spill team, you've still got your power theories, you've still got your power read theories. You can go power toss read from here, all right, and get, uh, and get the tailback uh, width a little bit quicker than your normal power read. So you can still do all of those things, all right, in your two back world, you can still live with all your base runs. So to me, you know, sometimes on offense, I think the issue is you get into situations where formationally you do some things to be a little bit different, but then you end up kind of limiting yourself to what you can do out of those formations. All right, when you're living in a two-back X over world, I don't think there's much limited. Some of the passing game can get limited because it gets funky with what you're going to do with the ineligible guy, right? So if you wanted to run any of your three-man or four-man strong concepts or any passing game, that guy's probably going to have to back out. If he backs out so that he doesn't go downfield, if he backs out, well, now you're losing that flat presence, right, if you tried to push somebody to the flat. So it's not ideal for drop-back passing, but there's definitely some things you can do in the drop-back passing game. There's certainly some things you can do, all right, in the uh, play-action passing game. I've seen teams use three as the ineligible guy and sprint out and now have three seal or block down because he can't go downfield. But the thing I like about it is within the run game, you are still sitting with all your base runs depending on how they want to play the set. So let's just say, you know, if they played it corner over, all right, and they tried to leave a, a standard box, you know, here, and they tried to match it up where the corners matched up, something, all right, where you, you played three bodies over three bodies, you still have all the run game that you want to. You still carry all your same runs. You can still, if you liked it, you could get counter back the other way, right? So very easily, very simply, you could get counter back the other way, all right, if you wanted to. Let's say you wanted to run a bass theory the other way and you want to run it off a toss. You could still get, all right, the, the center back there. You could get, okay, your front side guard there. You could get your backside tackle to go there to the will, you could get your front side guard to kick, your back side tackle to try and wrap on the safety, and you're going to hope to hold the Mike linebacker on the front side because now you're going to go toss read here off the end, all right, and now you've got bodies to where you can block, all right, it, however you want to get to, you've got body here, you've got body here, body here, arc release because you're not blocking that, and now you can block scrape support, and now you've got, all right, toss GT read going back the other way, all right, so again, you, you know, you've got all of your theories that are in there. If you were a, you know, if you were a tackle wrap team or a dart team, you've still got the dart the way you want it, especially if they give you the one technique away. So if they're an even front team, the way I like it the most is off of toss read, kind of the bash look, because I think it gives you the best of both worlds. But this is also a great tendency breaker, all right? As an offense, it's a great tendency breaker, um, when you are running a lot of plays to the sniffer or to the H-back, dart read off a of toss is a great one because it goes away from, all right, the action, the toss goes to the front side, but the actual run action is on the back side. So this one would be a little bit better if they, obviously, um, if, if they were working a theory where they didn't have, and, and we could still do it if they were eight-man front, all right, we could still do it because we, we're going to hope that the action holds all right, the, the 
the backers on the back side, we might end up one short on the front side. This is really good if they treat this as like a, if they push the backers a little bit and they treat it as a trip set, all right, now we're going to force that corner to really get involved because now if they're doing that, like I said, let's just say they're playing, all right, some type of mini theory over here. So they're playing those safeties over the top of those three receivers. They've kicked the linebackers a little bit. Okay, now what you're going to do is you're going to block the three, you're going to double the nose to the wheel, you're going to base block the five, you're going to pull that and try and get up on that safety. And now what we've got here is we've got toss action, arc release for the scrape support, or to be able to get support. So now we can get four on four outside, okay? And now we're going to put the stress on that defensive end. Do you want to squeeze or do you want to sit? All right, and then we're going to end up putting a lot of the stress back on the corner. Another live video at the end of the school day with belts going off, I apologize. We're going to put the stress on that corner now to come down and fit because technically with these numbers, we've got everything in the box blocked, right? So we're going to shuffle read here, quarterback dark going back away from the Y, all right? And now we've got the toss read going outside and we feel like we've got four bodies to get over four bodies. So the thing I like about it is, yes, it's going to affect your passing game a little bit. Yes, I will lose my weak side access, my weak side RPOs. Yes, I will lose some of the ability to do some things back to the single. I can still run runs weak. I can still go with some runs weak. But the thing that I really like about it is I stay, I stay in this two-back world. And now, depending on what I like to do on offense, I still stay in the power world. I still stay in the counter world. I still stay in the buck world if that's something I carry. All right? If I was, if I was a zone team, I still stay within all of the inside zone world, all right? So within the inside zone world, I still stay with read game, kick game, insert game, all right? And then if I was an inside zone team, I'd probably be a wide zone team. And now I've got extra bodies to the front side, so I've got traditional wide zone. I can go split flow wide zone. I can go wide zone insert if I'm declaring the numbers a little bit different with who my center count is going to be and where the center's working. I can use the H back to insert. So no matter whether I'm a gap team or a zone team, I still live with all those theories where I'm in the two back world, I'm carrying all my two back runs, and I'm creating a little bit of an issue for the defense to determine are you going to play corner over? If you're going to leave the backside in your normal sky or, or cloud adjustments on the backside, how are you going to handle the front side? If you handle the front side, all right, by covering up all three bodies, now we're going to get man-to-man -man somewhere, or at least we feel like we're going to get man-to-man -man on two of our better receivers. All right, if you cover those three up, now you got to figure out, you got to be careful within pattern match stuff because, number one, you don't want to treat it like a trip set because they have two back runs and you're going to be a gap short. Number two, you got to be careful with your pattern match because all they have to do at some time is step two off and three up, and now all of a sudden you got to match some different things to know who's eligible. So it causes some issues for the defense, but the biggest thing to me, it's the same as for the offense. We've got all of our two back runs that we like. If we were in a normal 11 or 20 personnel set, however you want to look at that formation, depending on your personnel, we've got all the same runs. We've got all the same theories. We are, are wrinkling formations, making the defense see something different. But at the same time, all right, you are now also getting yourself into a world where you can um, dictate how they have to match the, the trips and how they have to rotate or what they're trying to do. And now you can answer, uh, you know, pretty simply with all your same deals. A lot of times with different formations or formation wrinkles, number one, you don't know how they're going to line up. And then number two, you can't carry all your base schemes. The best formations to me are formations where you can still carry all your same schemes, same as, and now you've just got to figure out how the defense is going to handle it. Another great deal is getting into that and then motioning somebody back to see how they're going to handle that and who they're going to move depending who they've left on the backside. So if they go corner over and they match it and you motion somebody, that corner is probably going to have to travel and now you get them in, in some situations that you like. So uh, to me, if you're a two-back team, 11 or 20 personnel, uh, I think it's a really good set. We saw it a little bit this year for, against our tight front. Some teams did it to us um, with tight end on. And, and they covered the tight end up and left twins out there and then left two backs in the backfield and ran power counter and insert theories or ISO theories. And then they also had their two-man game out there. So, you, you know, you always knew that the tight end was eligible. But if you loaded the box up because of the three-man surface and the two-back sets, now they picked it. They picked at you with the, uh, the two 
wide receivers that were out there. So that one was a little bit to, easier to figure out who was the, the, the eligible because we knew it was always going to be the tight end. The three receiver one, when it's X over to me with um, 11 or 20 personnel, that is one quick adjustment. Two's on, three's off. All right, and now one and three are eligible. Three steps on, two steps off, now one and two are eligible. All right, usually it's going to be two on so that you can throw back outs or screens or things to three. You can still carry some, uh, some leverage deals or some access deals to three because two's in a position to block. If you put three on and two off and now you try to back two out, you lose three as a blocker because he doesn't have leverage with, three back and out, with two backing out or running a bubble or stand up or now you're going to lose the leverage of where three is, or you could stack those two guys possibly. So a bunch of different things you can do. I think it's a great set. I think it's a pain in the neck to defend on defense. We saw it a little bit this year and, and struggled with, uh, with some things, especially in the read game. Uh, the tight end version of it gave us some fits in our tight front at times, so we had to make some adjustments. So I think it's a really good set. I think it's easy to do. I think it's easy to use. You can carry all your same two back runs. So uh, if it's something you do, great. If you do it uh, or you do more out of it or things you like out of it, you can always uh, uh, leave a comment and let me know. Make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you turn the notifications on so you know every time we do a video. Thumbs up, thumbs down. If you don't like what we're doing or you do like what we're doing, it lets us know, uh, you know the content or how we provide the content to you. And then again, leave a message, talk about something, ask me a question, tell me what you do. It's always great to have interactions with the people watching the videos and I learn just as much as you guys do or hopefully uh, you guys are learning something but every time uh, I get messages or I read comments there's always things that I learn too so I love interacting with the people that are watching the videos. If you're still playing good luck to you. If your season's over good luck to your research or, or what you're doing or what you may be doing within your off season, clinic season, film study, everything else. Remember you won't play well until you play fast and I will see you guys next time.